All right guys, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about a turtle that if you're watching this channel, you've probably got one, seen one, had one, or you're vaguely familiar with. Uh, it's a turtle that's found around the world, for better or worse, I'm talking about the red-eared slider. So today we're gonna get into the red-eared slider, and is it a good pet turtle? Is it the best, is it the worst? Let's talk about that. All right, so to talk about the red-eared slider, you've got to talk about where they came from and why they became one of the most popular pet turtles. And way back in like the 50s, they started breeding these turtles down in Louisiana and the Mississippi Valley uh, by the thousands, and they were selling them in pet stores at about that big, fresh little green hatchlings, and they were selling them for like a nickel or a dime uh, at just about any store, and they became an, a huge just explosion of pet turtles. And they would even sell them with these like little tiny habitats, and they were really bad, in all honesty. And, but they just, they became a phenomenon, kind of took over for a long time. And then there started to be some issues with salmonella. And one of the causes that they thought was that children were taking these little tiny turtles and putting them in their mouth. So it doesn't make any sense to me, but if that's what they say, that's what they say. At any rate, what had happened was, what had happened was uh, these turtles ended up taking over. So a lot of people, uh, tend to kind of keep turtles for a little while and then uh, either get tired of them or they get overwhelmed or they just for whatever reason don't feel like they can keep them anymore and they thought maybe a good idea would be to release them and give them a life back in the wild. Well unfortunately people have been doing this kind of everywhere so the red-eared slider is just such an adaptable turtle they can survive anywhere. So they get released in park ponds, for example. You can go to almost any park anywhere, and if there's a pond, I can bet you there's gonna be a red-eared slider in there, or probably a lot of red-eared sliders. There's a public park close to my house, and it has a massive population of red-eared sliders. Now this park pond probably, at one point when they first built it, may have had some natives in there, probably some cooters, musk turtles, uh, maybe some local you know, yellow-bellied sliders, and now it's just overrun with red-eared sliders. All right, so right now I'm at a public park that has a set of trails near my house. And just beyond these trees, there's a large pond and there's a huge population of basically dumped red-eared sliders. And just over my shoulder is a female red-eared slider making her way up this hill, probably gonna lay some eggs uh, sometime this afternoon. So this is something that happens a lot uh, at these places where people do dump these turtles is they are nesting and creating even larger populations of these non-native red-eared sliders. So uh, they are super adaptable. This is something that they're totally capable of and that they do every day. Um, and that is one of the reasons why they can become so invasive and why some states and some countries have enacted laws prohibiting them. So given that background of just how adaptable and tough the red-eared slider is, are they a good pet turtle? Well, let's look at the genus Trachemys. Trachemys? <laughs> I, I never know how to pronounce them. We'll call it Trachemys, uh, the, the sliders. So the red-eared sliders are part of a bigger group of turtles, and they are the sliders. And they also uh, include the yellow bellied slider, which is very similar to the red-eared slider, a little bit more domed. Uh, the facial pattern, instead of a stripe behind the eye, they have a large, almost square-shaped yellow to olive blotch. Uh, much more domed shell because yellow-bellied sliders have a tendency to live further in the deep south, uh, and their range does overlap the range of the American alligator, so it helps to be a little bit more domed to fend off those predators. Uh, there's also the Cumberland slider and the Cumberland plateau, very similar to a red-eared slider, but does not have the red stripe. Instead, that red is replaced with uh, yellow. Uh, there's also the, out west I believe, there is the uh, Big Ben slider, and there is even a version of the red-eared slider found in parts of Texas. And uh, just really, you know, unique. I believe the pet trade has called it the ornate red-eared slider. Very beautiful. I've actually got a small one in my pond, 
and uh, you know does pretty well. Uh, and then further south, you get into Central America, and there is the Central American slider. There's South American sliders. I think there's even Haitian sliders. So hugely ranging, very adaptable turtles. All right. So in each of these hands is two other slider species. So here is a yellow-bellied slider in this hand here, and this is a adult female. As you can see, much thicker than the red-eared slider, and a little bit more herbivorous. As these guys age, they do become uh, more plant eaters, whereas the red-eared slider will stay a bit more of a scavenger and opportunist. Um, I like to have these guys in with cooters. They get along really well, a lot more mellow personality than the red-eared slider. In this hand, this is not even full-grown male uh, Central American slider. And these guys are kind of interesting. The shell is shaped a bit more like a cooter. Um, they have a longer neck, almost like a chicken turtle. Um, this big pattern on the bottom. And this guy is nowhere near done growing. These guys grow much larger than our native sliders. Um, not necessarily a good pet if you're looking for a turtle that doesn't get too large. But if you are into the sliders, I gotta recommend the Central American slider. They're just super cool. So let's take a look at some red-eared sliders. I have in this hand a young male red-eared slider. Uh, this guy is about five or six inches and he can get all the way up to about eight or nine inches for a really big male. Uh, it is common for <laughs> it is common for the males to uh, get what's called melanism as they get older and they'll turn into a nearly black turtle. Uh, but when they're young like this, they do have quite a bit of color. Uh, they are pretty attractive. I mean, that's some pretty bright orange, uh, still a lot of green, nice red stripe behind the eye. Uh, very attractive turtle. Now, there's a big difference between the males and the females. The females are much larger than the males. Uh, this is common in uh, all the sliders, cooters, even the map turtles. Uh, the females are just going to be so much larger. Um, and as you can see, that's a pretty big discrepancy. Now these two turtles could mate and produce offspring. Um, both of these I actually found in local streams and it is illegal to release non-native species here so I do take them out of the wild um, and I do find new homes for them. Um, and that is probably the main issue with the red-eared slider is that adaptability, they can live anywhere. Now if you have a pet red-eared slider, these, this, is what you're, uh, this is what you're headed towards. So that, whether you get it at, you know, close to this size, um, you have to be ready for this size turtle. Now, it's not too hard to do that. The main thing is, if you can house it outdoors, these turtles can handle insanely cold temperatures. They have found them all the way up into Central Park in New York, uh, just living outdoors naturally, and they can take the cold. Red-eared sliders make excellent pond turtles, and if you're gonna keep them, I highly recommend a pond, especially if you have other turtles. This gives your other turtles a chance to get away from these guys. They tend to be pretty aggressive at feeding time. They can be semi-territorial over basking spots. So if you can give another turtle kind of some space from these guys, they can be a bit overwhelming, but they should get along. Um, Red-eared sliders are just, uh, <laughs> they're really something. All right, so let's get into the positives and negatives of having a pet red-eared slider. The positives, they're a beautiful turtle. I don't care what anybody says, they will always be one of the most beautiful turtles on the planet, especially if you see a young, cleanly patterned red-eared slider uh, with those bright greens and yellows and oranges, that bright red stripe behind the eye. Their eyes are even beautiful. Um, they're, I mean, there's a reason uh, their scientific name is Scripta elegans because they are an elegant looking turtle. How often do you get to say elegant? Red-eared sliders are readily available. You can go into almost any pet store and be able to just walk right in and find a red-eared slider. So if you're looking to stock your pond, uh, maybe you have a stock tank or a large pond, you're all set. You can go anywhere and get a red-eared slider. Now, there are so many out there and so many in need of adoption. Before you go buy one from a pet store, I would heavily recommend looking into your local uh, reptile society uh, your local Humane Society, uh, Classifieds, Craigslist. Uh, look around and see if there's anybody in need of someone to adopt their red-eared slider because there are so many that get dumped. The thing we really want to focus on now is trying to keep them from getting released in the wild because what happens when people are releasing non-natives into the wild, that's when laws start to get enacted. Uh, Camp Cannon just recently posted a video talking about the sweeping laws that Florida's enacting against tegus, iguanas, large snakes. Um, it won't be a, you know, very long before 
those laws start getting pointed at other things, I believe it's already illegal to have a red eared slider in Florida. So um, if we can curb people releasing turtles into the wild in places that they don't naturally live, it's gonna be a lot better. So if you can and you really want a red eared slider, they're gonna be available somewhere near you and you should go for adoption. All right, so you wanna have a red eared slider. These are my tips on how to take care of one. So you can keep one inside in an aquarium, but long term, you're gonna need a huge aquarium. An adult red eared slider is gonna need probably bigger than a 100 gallon aquarium. Anything less than that is downright cruel for an adult red eared slider, especially a female. So I always recommend housing outdoors, but as far as diet goes, uh, these guys are adaptable. So I have seen wild uh, red eared sliders adapt from eating plant life to eating small crustaceans to scavenging you know nuts and seeds and everything off the bottom I've even seen them adapt over to a diet that you would see in map turtles and musk turtles eating little clams and snails and mussels so extremely adaptable and that makes them really easy to care for in, act in captivity because they're gonna eat pretty much anything you throw at them I know a lot of people like to feed them you know live fish chopped fish shrimp krill uh, greens like lettuce, uh, collard greens, kale, uh, you can do chopped uh, cactus. I mean, I literally the, the ones I have in my pond, I can throw anything in there and that red-eared slider will eat it. When I feed the cooters, I'm feeding them a lot of floating aquatic plants. I'm feeding them a lot of romaine lettuce. The red-eared slider gets down on that easily. When I come and I feed the map turtles and the musk turtles in here and I'm throwing in krill and little clams and snails, the red-eared slider is jumping on that too. So really easy to feed. So some of the essentials for housing these guys, you just need clean water, lots of space, and a nice dry basking area. So if you're housing outdoors, give them a spot where they can bask that's gonna get some direct sunlight for about three to four hours a day, not direct sunlight all day. Uh, direct sunlight all day, you're going to start to run into a lot of issues with algae. Um, any of the waste is going to quickly kind of turn, um, turn bad for you and you're going to end up having to double your filtration. So um, try to have some shade, some sun. Uh, if you're housing it in an aquarium, uh, just a nice high dry basking area. You can do an above tank basking area where they have a little ramp to come up and come out of the tank. Or you can do it inside the tank and have like a, a UVB bulb um, above that. So again, these are, the, these are the turtles everybody started with. So the basics are basic. They're really easy to care for. So if I'm gonna do a scale of, let's say one to 10 on how good of a pet turtle are they? I mean, they're easily at a five because easy to acquire, easy to care for, easy to feed, fairly easy to house. Um, in terms of personality, they are a little bit aggressive. They are a little bit territorial. They don't always get along with other turtles and they can be a bit much for other turtles to deal with. So a final score for me between one and 10, I would give them a solid seven. Uh, the only thing that holds them back, I would say, is just that little bit of slider aggression that they have where they want to really kind of me first, you know, like when it's feeding time, they me first, me first. They want to get in there first. And so they end up kind of overwhelming uh, species that are a bit more shy, like a map turtle, like a cooter. So again, such a readily available turtle. If you have a large collection of turtles, odds are if you don't already have a red-eared slider in there, at some point you're going to have one. Um, they catch a lot of flack because they are invasive, because they are found at this point around the world. I think the only continent they're not found on now is Antarctica. So they do catch a lot of flack for that, but there's a reason for that. And it's because they're such a hardy turtle, because they're such survivors. So that is something that deserves our respect, but it also deserves some uh, more responsibility on our part to give them a good home and to not release them. And if you can't take care of your red-eared slider anymore, Put it up for adoption, give it to a good home, and let somebody else enjoy what is, in reality, a pretty amazing turtle. All right, thank you guys for watching this video. I am had a great time talking about red-eared sliders. I almost never really get to talk about that species, so that is kind of fun. So I appreciate you watching this video. Feel free to share this video, uh, like, leave me some comments down there. Tell me about any of your red-eared slider experiences. I'd love to hear them. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this one. I'll see you next time.
Let's talk about that. I'm not trying to rip off Good Mythical Morning. <laughs>